that, we got this that's story. our job. This is it. <laughs> From Fox News. North Dakota man who killed an 18-year-old boy following political argument has charges reduced. Oh, so this God. story is actually from a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But uh, we overlooked it, and a lot of people are now picking the story up. You may remember this story. It's this guy, Shannon Brandt. He apparently called the police, called some kid. He claimed this, this, this 18-year-old kid was a Republican extremist and then ran him over. They charged him with murder. Recently, they dropped it down to manslaughter, and they're saying it wasn't part of a plea agreement. Meaning the prosecutors just quietly were like, we're going to reduce his charges on this mm -hmm. one. Yo, it feels more and more like across the country, if you if you like Donald Trump, if you are a conservative, if you're libertarian, if yes. you oppose the establishment, they will throw not just the book, but any book they have at you. There is unquestionably political motivation against conservatives and libertarians, people that are that are generally anti-establishment. There is a strong, strong incentive uh, to do everything you can to punish those people for their opinions. I don't think that there's a I, there's going to be people that are going to say, no, that's not true and stuff. I really find it difficult to see anything else. And you got 20 the 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 riots in 2020 people like this guy kill a kid. Dude, get, he hit you know, somebody with his car over, after a political argument. Yeah, after a political argument, that's. Like that's an extremely important part. This is a politically motivated murder. There was that kid in. Uh, how could that? Here's the thing. Like to drop it to manslaughter. I mean, how could it be unintentional? You and they go out of your way to hit somebody with a car, and he ran. And he, he fled. Ran. Wow. Yeah. This guy yeah. manslaughter. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> he got into an argument with someone and ran that dude over with his car. I think the kids were like dancing in the street or something, and he had known the kid, and he called him a Republican extremist. Ends up running the kid over. Uh, they said he he fled the scene, and they upgraded the charges to felony murder, probably because he fled. Yeah. And uh, they said he has also been charged with leaving the scene of a crash that resulted in death. Oh, my God. And now, not because of a plea agreement, they, they just said, as we have pointed out since the beginning, there's no evidence to support the misplaced allegation of intentional homicide. The state and defense forensic experts have provided comprehensive reports confirming the tragedy was an accident. Misplaced media hype and community conjecture is no substitute for evidence. Mr. Brand is anxious for the truth to be told to a jury trial. Fair point. Fair point. Let's see. Let's see a jury trial. I'll say this. Innocent until proven guilty extends to even people like this. And uh, maybe it is media hype. Yeah. But like when you charge him with fleeing a crime, you have to understand why we feel that way. So don't don't, don't say it's misplaced media hype when y'all literally charged a guy with leaving the scene of a crime that resulted in death. So yeah. like he says it's a Republican extremist, runs him over, it leaves. And then you're like, eh, it's an accident. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, when, I guess he's going to argue that he ran him over and thought it was a rabbit. Well, but that's the thing, right? Because there was a prior relationship here. They clearly didn't like each other. Political argument. Mm -hmm. There was no prior relationship between Jordan Neely and, and Daniel Penny. He was threatening people on the subway, so he intervened, yeah. right? It was just clearly situational. Anyway. This, this is a little a, a, a little different take on it, but it, listen, if you're a conservative or if you're a libertarian, I know you got a life and stuff, but if you get put <laughs> onto a jury, stay. Mm. Like, get in there and get on the jury, and if it happens to be someone that has political leanings that align with you... <laughs> Jury nullification is a great tool. Look at this headline from uh, the original story. Man admits to running over 18-year-old after they had a political argument. Unbelievable. So he admitted, he admitted to running over the teenager, leaving the scene of a crime after having a political argument, and they're like, nah, he's fine. Yo, if you're a Trump supporter Wild. and you fart, yeah. they're going to lock you up. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be like, what was that? I smell something. Yeah, well, you, you the smelt the Delta Act of 1987. <laughs> you know, and this yeah. is in what? Mo this is in Montana, was it? Or Wyoming? North Dakota, North, I think North it was. Dakota? North Dakota. I mean, it's it's not a, typically a bastion of progressive liberalism there. You know, I mean, there are definitely Democrats. I would imagine blue dog Democrat type. He, the kid called his mom, said he was being chased. It's like, this is premeditated. This, totally is, is. this is first degree. Yeah. Ah, that's amazing. They called it felony murder. I'm like, this is pretty. He's chasing the kid. The kid calls mom saying he's being chased. We don't have a justice system in the gun this country anymore. Wow. You know, we talked about he's drunk too. This kid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're if wow. you're driving drunk and you hit somebody, you get charged with like vehicular homicide, negligent homicide. Yeah. This is crazy. Man. Whether it be the whether it be the the stuff with George Floyd or with the Ahmed Arbery case or with this or it's like v very frequently there is significantly 
you know, significantly bad, bad prosecutions and stuff. You know, I mean, the FBI going after Trump with the, the stuff that came out with the Durham case, all that. I, I don't see how people can continue to trust the justice system when there are so many high profile abuses of the, you know, of the justice system. It's, it's, it's detrimental to the, the country. On they, they want you to wear an Antifa shirt. It's the only way you'll get you'll get justice. But then they, they want you promoting those ideas. It's 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 I'm half kidding, but it's kind of like how businesses put up Antifa stuff in their windows. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was in uh, we were we were uh, out in the West Virginia area. Uh, we were working on the cafe, and I see some of these businesses having LGBTQ plus flyers in their windows. Oh yeah, and I'm like, a lot of these businesses probably don't care. Someone comes in and says, "Can we put something in the window?" They say, "Fine," but some of them, like especially in West Virginia, are like, "Please don't hurt me." You can put whatever you want in the window. Please spare our mm -hmm. store. That was like the line from the 2020 riots. Please yeah. spare our store. Because these far leftists are going around and destroying every... Like, dude, if you're a small business, you can't afford to replace your front windows. No. I'm talking thousands of dollars. This makes me wonder if this is like what the French terror was like. How intense were the the, the leftists in, in the French Revolution? You know, how intense were they going after the population to, to terrorize them into agreeing? I, I, I can't imagine that it was you know, significantly more intense than to at least 2020. Well, they were beheading people. Uh, that's true. Yeah. So a lot of people. It was pretty bad. <laughs> and but then it look, turned on themselves. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. That Robespierre was like, oh yeah. no, and then well, they, they blew his jaw. Off. They, but, but, that, let that, but let that be a lesson to what's going to happen to these people. The revolution eats its own children. <laughs> but society was, society was also significantly more violent back then. Overall. Well, look, all I'm saying is don't be surprised if they start killing people. We've already seen terror attacks from lefties on the rise. There's, I mean, and they have literally said on television... We should kill them. Jane Fonda said murder is how we are going to solve the problem. Yeah. Well, she didn't. She, she, she's, they asked her, what could we do? And she says murder. Mm -hmm. And then they all immediately go, no, she's joking. She's joking. And then yes. she rolls her eyes. Oh, Covering right. for her. Yeah. Like she only joking, man. These people are nuts. Hanoi mm -hmm. Jane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> they're getting crazy out there, man. So I kind of feel like maybe this summer we'll see some shenanigans. Yeah. I hope but not, I think but... 2024 summer is going to get crazy. I am concerned about uh, next year yeah. leading into the uh, the election. So I got to ask you: um, during the COVID riots in 2020, you you've been COVID. I, I'm sorry, not the COVID riots. What's wrong with me? COVID 2020 riots. A lot happened that year. It was a great time <laughs> for busy. all of us. Inflation, riots. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a good time. No, I, I wanted to ask: uh, as a a fighter, when did you start to get involved politically? Yeah, so I, I started to get, you know, I've always grew up conservative my whole entire life, but I really started to really started to branch out when I saw that the media and all the athletes were just shoving one way down your throat, the liberal mm -hmm. way. And I'm like, why, why is no one else talking about conservative beliefs? And then I started to realize like all these athletes, like they don't want to disrupt their gravy train. They're mm -hmm. getting paid by these general managers, by these owners, managers, whatever. And if they say something, they're going to be bagging, you know, groceries at Walmart. So I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm an independent contractor for the UFC. Thank God for Dana White and the UFC, what they do, letting us be uh, independent contractors where we don't have to get our voices muzzled. We can say whatever we want. So, you know, my, my paycheck is not affected by what I believe in and what I stand for. So, you know, that, that's when I really started to come out. I was just sick of seeing the LeBron James way, you know, it just... Yeah. You know, <laughs> defund the police. Uh, oh, I care about equality and injustice and women's rights. Wh women's rights, bro. LeBron, you you abuse women. You got women in Chinese sweatshops. You're mm -hmm. working for pennies on the dollar. You're making hundreds of millions after them. How could you care about women's rights when you're a woman abuser? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's funny how you don't see these people talk it's, about creating real American jobs. No. So that we can do away with sweatshop labor and help American workers bring back manufacturing. They're just yeah. no whatever well, whatever 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 whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever talking point the me the Democratic Party or the media tells them to say they just regurgitate it. It's just it's virtue like, signaling. It's empty virtue signaling. Uh, it's nonsense. So like, what kind of pressure has been put on? I know you said you're a private contractor, but have people sort of tried to step in the way of that? Get clients in trouble? Get the UFC in trouble? Absolutely. So mm -hmm. we had a we had a Reebok was sponsoring the UFC, and mm -hmm. they didn't sponsor me individually. They just uh -huh. sponsored the you know yeah. the company. They didn't sponsor me individually. After one of my fights, they tried to. 
retract some of my statements saying, oh, we don't stand for what Colby Covington believes. Oh, we, we're asking for him to get fired from the UFC. And Dana's just like laughing like, what? <laughs> what? He's can an I, independent contractor. Can I ask what you said? Or is this something you can say on air? Or? No, I just, you know, I just, uh, you know, after I beat this guy that was all about uh, Black Lives Matter, I just, you know, I crushed his dreams and I just, you know, stood up for conservatism and, and I was patriotic and they didn't they, like the way I said it. But it's crazy how like, they can say whatever they want politically. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing. No. Yeah. And then you do the exact same thing they did, but for your beliefs, and they're like, shut him down, fire him. Yep. I do think it's awesome that Dana's laughing, and he's like, no. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. Because a, a lot of major league sports, they, they have in their contracts, they'll go to the, the player, the athlete, and be like, you really got to tone it down. You know, like, we're getting, we're getting heat. Mm -hmm. I think people who have FU money need to start acting like they got FU money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are they so scared of? It's, it's the yeah. weirdest thing. They, but you know, you know what it might be? It might be that UFC is... I, I think it's just a bunch of high testosterone dudes aren't going to be told what they can and can't do. It's one of the last bastions of masculinity, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, not for not for nothing. It's it's and and it, people will say there's toxicity and stuff, but it's totally not because those the guys like you are so well trained, so disciplined, and so focused. It is not like just you know like you were talking earlier, like just raw emotion. You have to be smart. We were talking earlier about getting under your opponent's skin and talking <laughs> talking trash and how, how that's an important part. And I think that that's a good <laughs> thing for young men to do. I like, I think young men should get into jujitsu, you know, especially like young people, I think should be fine. Like, and then if you, you get older and you want to get into striking sports that, you know, more power to you. But like that kind of stuff is really good for young men because it's a great way to get you, expel energy. You learn about yourself. You learn about respecting other people and, you know, learning your limits and stuff. So I think that it, I think uh, that the UFC plays an important role today for young men um, to to be able to express their their masculinity in a positive way. I love the. Uh I crushed his dreams, you know. Just yeah, I know. That was very, hilarious. Very passively. And like, you know, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I, I woke up one day, <laughs> crushed a guy's dreams. It just, it just I didn't want to get you guys kicked off YouTube. So <laughs> saying some mean words. You know, I get locked in a cage. It's okay if I leave someone in a pool of blood. But, oh, dang, he says some mean words. Cancel that guy. <laughs> Kobe, that's, what that, is, that, that's the funny thing, though. Well, I, like, we talk about all the time how in movies there's murder, there's death, there's chaos. Mm -hmm. But then someone 10 years ago did a bad joke, so they got to get fired from their job. Yeah. They say nothing about In fact, they cheer you on that you're you, you and another guy are attempting to mercilessly beat each other to prove that you're the better fighter and they're like that's cool and then you're like i like donald trump and they're like right. <laughs> shut it down they're like that's violence <laughs> yeah no for real inciting <laughs> violence oh my god not the, not the actual show itself yeah. they're like well yeah. you know we understand fighting is a sport <laughs> but no you know you, you, like it's like it's almost like the leftist version of ufc is two guys going to a ring and start Talking about how much who likes Trump more than the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> you like Trump the most. Like, no, 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 no. It's it's two guys saying things about why Trump is good, why <laughs> why they like Western civilization, misgendering each other. <laughs> misgendering, like, <laughs> yep, and they're like, it's just the most violence they've ever seen. <laughs> who can take it for the longest? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> who can take it from the longest? <laughs> he <laughs> said Trump beat up my dad. I'm tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! He, 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 he said the future isn't female. <laughs> I'm out. I can't do this. It's too much. It's too much. And then it's like there's low blows. Dude, just literally the the UFC micro uh, microaggression division. I was, I was watching. I was watching that fight a couple weeks ago. Where um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, who was it? Who was it? Um, but one guy accidentally hit the other guy in the nuts. Mm. Oh, like, and then they immediately backs off and he puts his like sorry about that yeah, and they're like no it's cool it's cool we can we can go again like that's like a big no no right yeah, like you don't yeah we, we like you know that's not that's not sportsman like yeah it's not sportsman like but you know sometimes in, in the heat of battle you know it's tough to control your weapons you know sometimes you're throwing a body kick and it goes a little low it might hit the nuts but that's why we wear a cup in there so you, yeah. you can't feel that you get kicked in the nuts you're not you're not going to feel that with the cup on so oh right on yeah so i just but i imagine if the leftists are getting into the ring it's like you have a moment where someone says something and they're like whoa 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 like that that's an illegal move you can't say that that's too violent you know saying something like trump 2024 and they're like whoa whoa <laughs> no, shut it down, shut it down. The, the, the real extreme stuff is that's not a penis yeah you know <laughs> that's a wound that's what sucks that's about, not a vagina that's what sucks about the media mma media they're all liberal like they all hate trump they all just yeah. they all just bash him constantly and they don't want to give me a platform they never want to speak to me so you know, it's just funny because none of them, none of them are actual journalists. None of them have journalism degrees, but they want to act like they're journalists. Mm. It's, it's funny. There's, I mean, I, I, I'll, 
I hate the journalism degree thing. I, I suppose there, there was, yeah, Seamus is a journalist. I'm sh- I, I think back in the day, <laughs> it probably made some sense. We were, I was talking about this today with my family that we're, you know, we're in, we're in West Virginia in the small town. The newspaper used to just be like a bulletin board. Seriously, like the news was like a guy fell off his ladder and hurt his leg. Mm. You live in the city and you get, you pick up the newspaper. It's like John fell yesterday. And you're like, oh, John fell. Wow. Mm-hmm. And there, there's only a few thousand people. So most people knew sort of who yeah. everybody was. Yeah. Now, nobody cares at all about who their neighbor is, and you can have a house burn down across the street from you and be like, what happened? That was a fire? I didn't even know who lived there. Mm-hmm. Now, like, we completely separated ourselves from, from all information on this stuff. Well, with the political bias, it's extra bizarre. And, you know, you're talking about the UFC here and the fact that UFC journalists are, are all on the left. I understand that journalists are usually uh, lefties, but UFC is not like some flowery left-wing thing. That's why it's so bizarre, right? Yeah. It's, it's funny. They, they want us all to be betas, but we're all alphas. You know, yeah. they, they don't want you know masculine men in society. You know, they, that's not their agenda. It doesn't fit their agenda. I just don't like. Are they doing their little like critical theory analysis on the fights, or how does that even work? I I I, I think the the reason they're, <laughs> I think UFC allows like you know like I was saying Dana White because it's like high testosterone guys who are just like. After you've been punched in the face so many times, words kind of roll off your back like they didn't even happen. It doesn't even matter. But these journalists are genuinely terrified words. They hurt them. Yeah. These millennials, yeah. these Gen yeah. Zers who have never experienced anything. And it's funny because people are, we've had a couple super chats where like, these these guys have never even been punched in the face. Like talking about us and like, we're going to sit here and talk with you. And it's like, no, I've I, definitely I, been punched in the face, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, I've, and, and uh, I've oh. been in, 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 uh, uh, I'll keep it light, like conflict, crisis, and uh, and, and uh, I don't want to say overt war, but I've been in places where people are shooting at each other, and I've watched yeah. people die. Not that I've been directly punched in the face. I've yeah. had anti, I've had anti try to punch me in the face. But well, I mean, but, look, I, listen, I, I I'm a white belt. Like, listen, ju- I'll put it this way. I, well, oh, I'm you, a white belt in jujitsu, so I know what it's like to get wrapped up. Okay, <laughs> so I know but, what it's but, like but, to no, get no, beat up. So. But I'm I'm here to say, like, fair point. Like, I don't, I'm, I, I have, I have no problem being like. I have no idea what it's like to go up against the greatest fighters in the world and oh, win or sure. lose. And these 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 leftists act like they do know. I know, act- and, and I totally get that, and I, I agree, but I just don't know how anyone could hear me speak and come to the conclusion that no one's ever punched me in the face before. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Oh. I think the best thing about MMA media is just they all write with their their bias and, and their feelings. They don't write impartial journalism. They they don't say they don't call a spade a spade. You know they right. they dance around it. And it's just sad to see. What, what, what do you think? You think most fighters are probably right leaning? I would say it's a mix. I'd say it's half and half. But I'm like, how do you how do you be a fighter and a leftist? I just don't understand that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, some of the guys are vegetarians or vegans and mm. and all about the soy boy life and safe spaces and this and that. <laughs> Wow. Well, and I, I think it's also like the particular brand of left wing politics, right? Because I don't think a, a lot of them, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think a lot of them are going to be like feminists, but, but I could but, definitely see like the BLM thing. That's something the, that but, I could see appealing to men in the, the MMA. But these, these, these vegan fighters, they're not like heavyweights, right? No, nah, they're like middleweights, lighter weights. Yeah. Cause I don't, I, 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 and I'm not trying to rag on anybody who's vegan. I got no problem with that. You know, live your life, do what you want to do. Just please be healthy. And, and if you are awesome, yeah. but it's really hard to maintain higher weights. Like I was I was reading interviews with uh, Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth talking about playing the role of Thor. And he was he was saying he was eating thousands of calories of fish and chicken every day to try and maintain that muscle mass. And it's really, really hard. Constant training, wild. eating like crazy. And then once you stop, you start going back down. So I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like maybe it's just my bias. But if you're, if, 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 if you can take a hit, if you can fight at the highest level, how are you going to be the kind of person that's like words are violence? Mm. You know what I mean? You're going to be like, I don't care what you call me, dude. I just got punched in the face. It hurts. Well, and that's the other. Like, I, I think a lot of it is just based on this is my side of the aisle. Again, you mentioned like the BLM thing. Uh, I could totally see that. And I think a lot of it just becomes like tribal politics. You know, my family was Democratic growing up or my family was Republican growing up. And that's why I'm into this and not... You know, my gender studies professor told me words are violence or something like that. I, I would suspect most of the people in the UFC on the left aren't coming at it from the blue-haired college student angle. 
Yeah, no, most fighters, you know, didn't go to college and yeah. they're rather dumb. So, I mean, they get most of their information from either social media or mainstream media. I and mean, we know how, how controlled that is, you know, mm. and how, how much fake news is out there. So, you know, these these kids in, in fighting are a lot of sheep, you know. They don't they can't think for themselves or do, do the research to find out the real information. They just read a, a news article like that on New York Times and they just believe what it says automatically. Mm. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to Timcast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.